Hi, I'm Claire. I teach computer applications technology here in Johannesburg. You know how your teacher always tells you to practice past papers? Yeah, that doesn't really help if you don't know how to do half of the stuff. That's what this is for. You'll find a link to the files in the description below, along with the table of contents, so you can just click straight to the question you need help with. We all learn the best from our mistakes, so please, you have to try this by yourself before you watch this video. Let's get into it. So first we need to open this 7 top 10 document and change the author to your exam number. So to, I can't actually just go and edit this. I need to go right click remove person and then add an author with my exam number. Just going to cancel and you can see it's actually added that as an author. Save, close. Next, we need to open this 7 convert document and we need to save it as a single web page. Save as with the same name. So we're going to choose web page out of here and save. And you'll see it's actually changed the view to web layout. Now we need to change something in Excel. So we're going to open this graph document and at the moment the graph, if we click on it, you'll see it only includes the data from 2013 and they want us to include the data for 2014 as well. So I'm going to go to my chart tools, design, and I'm going to select the data again. And then while the border actually moves like that, I can literally just go and reselect it to include 2014 as well. And you'll see it's actually added that range. Now I need to change this chart type to a 3D line. So I'm just selecting the chart and I'm still in chart tools, change chart type. And over there I can see that's the 3D line. Okay. Now they say we need to save this, but keep it open. So let's just keep it open and see what we need to do next. We're going to open the seven attract document. And you'll see the first thing we see is that this document is now in a web layout view. It's not in the regular print layout view. So I'm just going to change that to print layout view so that it looks like it usually does. And I need to insert a footnote on this text. So footnotes can be found under references. Now, usually if they give me some funny instructions, I'll open footnotes from the dialog launcher here so that I can change the position of the footnote or the number format, but they didn't ask for any of that. So I'm literally just standing at the end of the text and I click on insert footnote. It then jumps to the area where I can type the text. Now I need to paste the graph to link here by insert graph. So I'm just going to press one enter and this is where I need to paste the graph from the Excel document and any future changes need to be displayed in the Word documents as well. So I'm going to go back to Excel and I'm going to copy my graph and it's very important that you keep Excel open. Then you can go to your Word and I go to home paste special paste a link to a Microsoft Excel chart object. Okay. Now this is a bit big. I'm just going to make it a tad smaller. Doesn't have to, you could have left it just as is. But do you see the borders actually looks different than a normal picture? As well as if I right click on it, it shows update link. That's how you know you did it correctly. Now I need to do a find and replace where I need to find the whole word tour. So I'm going to go to replace. I need to find the whole word tour. So I'm going to go to more and click find whole words only. And I need to replace it with the word trip in blue. So I need to go to format font and change the color to blue. Replace all two replacements. Next, we need to work with columns. So I need to insert this text from Oetswering all the way to this last picture of Robin Island into two columns. So I go to layout, I've selected it and I go to columns two. Now you'll see if you play around with this, uh, the graph that's so big at the top actually causes havoc here. 
So I'm just going to make it way smaller so that this will fit in. There you go. Now, the problem is they want this word, Robin Island, to actually start on the sec in the second column. So I'm just going to stand at the last picture here and insert a column break that will force Robin Island to the next column. Now, I don't need this paragraph character there, so I'm going to press delete, not backspace, delete, and there everything fits in. Last instruction says the text need to be justified here as well. So home and that one's justify. Now I need to save and close all of these documents. Save, close, save, close. Next we're going to do a merge. So we need to open the seven merge document. This is my master document. Just going to switch that off. And they've told me what I need to use as the data source. Uh, this is the one I'm going to use as the data source. But I don't need to open this. I'm just going to link it. So have a look. In my Word, I go to mailings. And you're more than welcome to use the step-by-step -step wizard if you like it. I prefer just keeping in mind start, finish. Do you see half the stuff is not available yet? Because I haven't linked it to any data. So let's just start from the start and we move all the way to the finish. So we're going to start mail merge and we're going to do letters. If they don't tell you what you're doing, trust me, you're doing letters. If they don't clearly specify an envelope or a label, they want you to make letters. Then we need to link it to the data source. We're using an existing one. We're not typing one by ourselves. So we use existing list and we're going to go to the seven tourists document that they've given us. Um, if there was more than one worksheet, we would have then chosen the correct one, but there is just one, so, okay. Do you see suddenly all of this is available now that I've actually linked it to my data source? Yeah. So the next bullet tells us um, about specific filtering that we need to do because we only want specific travelers. So we're going to go to edit recipient list, and here you'll see it actually shows me all the clients I've got at the moment. Name, date of birth, age, gender trips this is the number of trips and this is whether they are an international traveler or, or not so i only need clients who are international travelers so i'm going to go to this drop down arrow and say i want all the non-blanks do you see it doesn't say true or false uh, it just says blanks so i'm going to say non-blanks that's what i want um, but then i want travelers who've made more than 20 trips and that's something i can't do from here so i'm going to go to advanced and I'm going to say for the trips field, the comparison is that it needs to be greater than 20. And you see this is set to and at the moment. It's not either or, it's both of these. Okay. Check that you still have records here. If you don't, then you did something wrong over there. Next, I need to sort the client names in ascending order. So I'm going to do that from there, sort ascending. You're welcome to also use these um, commands, but whether you do it from here or from here, same result. Okay, now we need to add the merge fields. They always indicate the merge fields with these arrows on either side, and this is where we inserting a merge field. So we finished with the start section, we need to write the fields now, and we're gonna insert the merge fields. So I prefer, you can do it however you want, but I prefer literally just selecting the area that I need to replace and going insert merge field name and there it's replaced it. And same with trips. I don't select this little extra space at the back, otherwise it's not going to have a space between the words. And I insert trips. Now if you want to check if it works, you can preview your results, you don't have to. But if you preview it, you can check, oh it's actually worked. Switch off preview. And they always say first save the document. So we're saving this one, the seven merge. Half of your marks are going to come from here. Save. And now we need to complete the mail merge. So the mail merge isn't completed yet. We've just made the master document. To complete it, we need to go to finish. Finish and merge, edit individual documents. Always. You'll never print it. We're going to edit it. We're merging all the records. And you'll see it's actually created a second document called letters one. Now I need to save this new merged document. You'll see it has everyone's letters. If you look at the bottom there, it actually shows you it has 10 pages. 
I'm going to save this one as 7M data in your exam folder. So I'm closing that one and I'm going to close the 7M7 merge one as well and you'll see it always asks you to save again after you've completed the merge. And that's November 2014 paper done for you.